to be honest, I didn't uh, select it like to be sociological. I mean, it's open to be interpreted the way that everybody wants. But it just started uh, from one specific story. Actually, like I think every work of art would be started with an obsession. You know, you have like many ideas, like they could be interesting for you for some moments or a day, but it would be one that wouldn't leave you. Uh, and that would become an obsession. So my uh, departure point for this film was this story that like, uh, if you have seen the film, Sima visits the house, she sees that uh, Behzad, uh, her husband is masturbating with the uh, sound of neighbors having sex. And she decides to pretend that she hadn't seen anything. So that was the uh, a story that I was uh, really like, you know, uh, obsessed with. And uh, I started to, you know, to think about like, or to grow this story, the whole script out of this story. Definitely it has its own sociological or, mm, yeah, I mean like different aspects. In the beginning, uh, Minu and Kayvon, two uh, young uh, characters of the film, they were supposed to meet at the end of the film. Uh, but then when I found uh, the actors, like when I uh, met Yas and Ali, the actors of uh, Minu and Kayvon, and I was fascinated by their talent, uh, I really liked them, really learned from them. So I thought I want to have them more. So actually I brought <laughs> the ending to the beginning. And then uh, I started to write more scenes for them. And it became important to have sort of parallel between this young generation and the older ones. That I belong definitely to the grown up ones. Uh, this young generation part, if I would say so, it's more fluid, it's lighter, uh, they're mostly just in the city, uh, but the part that is uh, about the grown-ups is more fragmented, it's, um, it's a kind of representative of their situation. So even in terms of form, is different from the other one, and I think like the dialogue that is, uh, that is shaped with this, uh, you know, confrontation of two generations helps to understand each of them more. I'm not uh, very much interested in, in a sort of like, you know, a storytelling that is like, and then, and then, and then. Um, so um, I, I would call it like different like islands. Uh, or like a constellation of like these fragments that they are supposed to work with each other. So that's like the narrative structure that I was interested in. Um, it, so obviously it doesn't have a conventional plot, but I also use this excuse of, uh, because like we see the, uh, this kind of like the, the challenge that is in the relationship of uh, Behzad and Sima, and somehow I used it as an excuse, like the uh, finishing of their story, uh, as an excuse to finish the film. But I could have imagined that it could be continued, you know. So it's not a very like uh, um, um, certain moment that you would say this story is finished. Uh, it was also fragmented because I, I'm interested in different um, tones, different modes of cinema. For example, the first part with the young ones, maybe it's, uh, as I said, more fluid, light. It's more like French New Wave, maybe. But uh, the part when Sima enters the house and she finds out, then it has suspense. Or the sequence in Sandwich Shop is more like a social island of the film. So I like to have this contrast between these modes.
I mean, the only thing that I knew from the beginning was uh, like uh, they are uh, from middle class, like let's say educated middle class of Tehran. Uh, and uh, then like I wasn't interested in giving sort of biographical information about the characters because uh, not just as a gesture, because, because I didn't think that it's really helpful. Like, uh, I didn't find that, like, their jobs ad would add something, uh, for example, to the story. So I thought, actually, like, maybe their gestures, tones, way of discussing things could reveal more about their characters or, like, their challenges. There are, like, different um, reasons for that, at least for me. Uh, you... Uh, for example, there are like some lines of dialogues that would be repeated in another uh, sequence, just to see uh, what if if the if the context of that dialogue would be changed, what would happen to the way that uh, would be uh, that the same dialogue would be perceived by the audience, or uh, or sometimes like uh, the story that you have seen uh, before. Uh, another character would be heard from from the character who was in that sequence just to make a new comment about it. So um, I want to say that there are lots of moments that you have this kind of reverbs of ideas in different parts of the film. So this is like a boomerang effect that something has left the frame but would be back in a certain moment.